question. Are there any areas where you would support budget cuts? You know, I have to say that um, I am, I'm not a um, person who believes in just taxing and spending. I, I just don't. I think, that, you know, it's not the way I um, um, maintain my, my own checkbook. I'm, we, none of us can, right? That's not, it doesn't work. So we know that. That's a pragmatic uh, statement. So I do believe, actually, in pay as you go. I think it's necessary right now. I do. I have to say that. I think that you know we need to be able to look clearly at where our money is going. I think that, for example, we are we we have that classic dichotomy. I uh, said this before. I'll say it again. It's where do we, where do we spend our money? We have we are two wars, and we have a domestic policy agenda that is that requires resources. We're going to have to make some decisions very quickly. What we're going to have to do really is look at um, uh, President Obama's statement that in 2011. We're out of Afghanistan, we start pulling troops out, we're going to have to start doing that. Because we actually need to take reallocate resources elsewhere. Looks like we have a follow-up. Yeah. Uh, I'm empathetic to just about everything you said, but as a person who is currently unemployed, when you said about pay as you go, uh, every two weeks you file for unemployment, of course. And we've had scares from the Republicans with the pay-as-you-go philosophy for a lot of unemployed people in the country. It started with Jim Bunning and his nonsense about just disconnecting this extended benefit, mm -hmm. uh, which is longer than usual because of the high unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. And then they just tried to do it again before Congress recessed. And then, of course, when they came back in, the, the Democrats uh, overruled them. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to have is a ping-pong effect up until the election with the Democrats trying to extend unemployment and the Republicans trying to mix it. But I guarantee you if the Republicans start taking control of Congress or depending on which way the election goes, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of unemployment people in a lot worse shape. And, and they have the mindset that people who are unemployed deserve to be unemployed, that they're lazy and shiftless. I mean, that, that, that's the I Republican know, know thinking. Saying, yeah. And yet I have lots of friends, like engineers and all kinds mm -hmm. of people making fifty, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars a year, cannot get jobs. So this is a lifeline for them. So in, in follow-up to what you said about pay. I, I need to cut off. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys, I think we get the gist and of I, Yes, concerns. and let me tell you this, that I had not thought about pay as you go Only in that broader go. context. I had not. I thought about it as um, a, a method, uh, albeit a conservative one, to create some discipline um, around spending. And that right. is un that is an unfortunate consequence of it, and I will rethink my position and because I, w I will do so. Thank you. Thank you. That's called a dialogue. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, this is the part of the being the moderator I don't like. We've got a little over 10 minutes left, and we still have a bunch of questions as we've gotten some more in. So I'm going to try to consolidate some, and then uh, and I think we're going to end up leaving some out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to consolidate these two, even though they're not really uh, that closely related. Um, what are your views on same-sex marriage, and would you vote to overturn uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I believe in civil unions, and I would vote to overturn, overturn excuse me, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I believe that um, everyone should have civil unions. Let me, let me be clear about that. And if a person wants to have a marriage in a church, that is what they should be able to have. That is my position. <laughs> I also believe in the right to privacy. And um, I think that is directly tied to that issue. Thank you for the clap. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sensible response. No one ever yeah. says that. I know. That is yeah. exactly what I think so many would want to hear. About everyone should, should have a civil union, and then if you want a marriage, go get married. Yeah. There is some justification for a congressperson to vote based on opinions of their constituents. There's also justification for a representative in a representative republic to vote based on his or her own research and opinion. Give us your thoughts. How would you decide your votes? She's I, I, I thought about this, that question a lot in the context of the healthcare debate, I must say because I think that became a, um, a challenge for many, um, many representatives 
do I vote what um, my constituents say I should or what I, uh, you know, because I've polled them and, and because they, and I mean this, would they have a sincere set of beliefs around healthcare reform or should I do what I think is best? And I have to say that I think it is a combination. I'm not trying to um, hedge. I think it depends on the issue. I believe that when it came to health care, for example, if I can tell you what I believe, it's easier for me because I wasn't uh, the representative at that time. I believe, though, that it was right to be on what I consider the right side of history and to work to make that happen for us. And um, I, I, so in that instance, no matter what a poll, in other words, had shown, I would have said that there are 445,000 um, citizens within my district who are underinsured. There are about 25,000 who are uninsured. There are senior citizens who, um, you know, are all, who get caught up in the, um, the um, donut hole. And I would have thought about all of those factors and I would have said, I would have had to explain though, I believe this is the best thing for me to do. I would have done that in that instance. I would have had a dialogue with my constituents, however. So I think in that instance, I would have said, this is the right thing as far as I see it. I want you, and I think you can do that if you feel secure in your, if you feel secure in your ability to think through the issues. It's not to have the right answer, but to think through the issue. And so, and you can, your mind can be changed by individuals. I think, but I think you have to be able to talk through those issues. That's why I would have started that discussion. Um, and then I would have asked um, um, those who believe differently, convince me of your position. And then I, I know, you know, I listened a lot to healthcare. I would have come out the same way because I think it was the right thing to do.